Yo, what is up you guys? So, you guys have been asking me for a while to react to this Project G1. Now, I believe this video does follow up with the Shed 17. We reacted uh, about a while back. <laughs> I believe it's continuing off of Shed 17. So, with that being said, let's go ahead. Let's make this short because this video is 50 minutes long. So, grab some snack, kick back, and relax. And let's enjoy the video. Loyalty. Honor. Ooh, respect. Shed 17. When you lose even one of those, you take something away from those around you. Yeah, man. Once the loyalty respect love, is gone, your friends, you gone too. We let down those closest to us without ever realizing we'd done so. The people that didn't leave work at night. They weren't the railways for the love of railways. They weren't silenced. They weren't subdued. They just didn't have anything to object to. By the time they realized there was a problem, it was too late. Oh, that's the end of Shed 17. We didn't stifle them. We didn't lock them away. We didn't lie to them. We committed the worst sin of all. We just didn't listen. If you do recall, he like came out of the shell and he like blew up. I don't know. I forgot what happened, but I know he came out of the room. <laughs> Yo, they just shot him up. Oh my god, so violent, man. Little cartoon dudes are so violent. On the 6th of October 2015, the world was reintroduced to the horrors and suffering that began on a small island behind the Thomas. northwest coast of England. Recalling the facts behind Thomas. I don't think the documentary showed anything we didn't already know. People had just become desensitized to what had happened to Thomas and his friends. The reaction, or rather, overreaction began straight away. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be me right there. <laughs> this young man in the USA had become so traumatized by Shed 17, he had memorized all the dialogue and would do nothing but watch the program in a loop, mouthing the words. What a weirdo, man. He would later be taken away fruit. to a psychiatric unit. Many viewers would be offered similar treatment often being asked to illustrate what scared them and confronting it as a successful therapy. This young man began making his own model railway stories as a form of treatment. Soon many of these people would be allowed limited access to the outside world, even beginning to form social connections to people and in some cases form friendships. After the Thomas incident became public, the tourist trade began to dry up. People stopped coming to Sodor for biofusion operations. And so there were massive layoffs on the railway itself. Numerous attempts were made to salvage the tourist trade on Sodor. Finally, in a last ditch attempt, the railway was promoted with an ill judged celebrity endorsement. Of the train. Who is but it that? wouldn't just be young people suffering. Many would suffer trauma in their own way, both human and biofused. As you can see, it gets very dark very quick. With the documentary came the public outcry and the media's need for a scapegoat. The Goetze family were in hiding. The fat c had vanished with all his money. And there oh, I was, controller. in full public view, being blamed for I'm the sorry. whole thing. Do you want to apologise, person? You, frankly, you should know better than that. Huh? Oh, bloody hell! I was finally. I think he just pooped himself, so he won't have to say a word. Story on national television. Tell people what actually happened, and acquit myself. In the eyes of the public. Mr. Hartley, are you to blame for the events on Soldar Island? Well, let me tell you, 
I am not. I am totally to blame for what happened to Thomas and all his friends, and what? I do it again tomorrow. Last time I go on channel That's some four, deep fake stuff right but there. the public outcry would bring an anonymous whistleblower out into the light. Someone who would reveal more facts about the events on Sodor Island. Are they talking about Thomas? And after the Thomas incident. I worked closely on the television series in the early 80s, so I was around the engines at all times. It's only now, after I can't make a difference to those engines' lives, that I heroically decided to speak. As the government finally relented Who is this? and shut down the whole biofusion operation on Sodor, a tragic dilemma faced the scientists. Some people were still in the biofusion process. Being in process is the last place anyone wants to be. They had to complete their procedures quickly, or they'd be left to die. Wow. That meant turning them into the simplest form of life that existed. Trucks, oh my God. the faceless ones, rarely had the brain capacity to retain long-term memory. They were the lucky ones. I can't imagine a worse hell than being a truck. Fortunately... <laughs> Imagine being a truck. I would hate my life too. Oh, that is disgusting. The biological organs' exposure to the open world meant an increased risk of infection and slow, well, yeah. painful death. You got all your organs just out and about. Fearing being shut away forever, some trains would seek opportunity elsewhere. Chris Duck Dixon, an Oliver Surname's dream, was to work on the famous Sodor Railway. They were childhood friends who shared the same love of trains. They'd made a pact to become engines. Sadly, it came too late. The ban on biofusion came into effect just after Oliver and Duck were looking forward to working on the railway. When it looked as though they would be locked away forever, the Japan Railway Group offered them work on their railway. Duck and Oliver jumped at the chance. The travel was paid for by the Japanese railway, and they couldn't wait to be there. Unfortunately, arriving in Tokyo, Duck and Oliver would find that, under Japanese law, they weren't recognised as human beings, and so had no rights at all. They would soon learn their true fate. Oh. That's gotta suck. I mean, they are trains now. Dude, are they gonna make them they, battle? Along with other engines, unfortunate enough to fall into this trap, were to take part in a <laughs> sick pay-per-view event. Are they gonna make them fight each other? Wait, I thought you guys were best friends, dude. Oh, they're transforming now. Autobots. You destroyed my childhood. Oof! I write for childhoods, by the way. Fitted with pneumatic joints, stabilizers, and supports. Dude, they're they about to square up. The main event. Oh! Is that Wolverine? <laughs> Oh my god, my boy is going to get put out. No, he's not. Uppercut. Oh, oh. This has got to be the most intense train fight I've ever seen in my life. 
So they had to put their friendship aside. There was only one way to survive. Dude, he's still beating him. Oh my god, he's not stopping. And that is how you and your best friend become no non-best friends anymore. <laughs> Yo, someone stop him. I can't believe you've done this. Yeah, you messed up, bro. This is so cruel. Other engines would welcome opportunities offered by the British government. I bet my money on him next fight. The British government had banned the use of biofusion publicly, but couldn't ignore the military British. opportunities. Selling war to the world was too profitable. Hit Logistics was the military contractor secretly tasked with continuing the work Hitler that Logistics. Sodor research had begun. The first task was finding as many engines as possible. Biofuse material had become rare and Hiss Logistics immediately recruited people to hunt down as many decommissioned engines as possible. One was an old colleague we all called Friend. Oh. Even when he was being interviewed for the Shed 17 documentary, the professor. he was neck deep in I remember that bald head. research. His biggest dream was much more sinister. Project G1 was Professor Owen Ruth's dream. The breaking down of biofuse matter to their very cells, and then deprogramming them. Engine remains Man's is a maniac. Reused to form anything they wanted. An evil genius, per se. I the project. The cells have their DNA instructions removed. Biofuse stem cells, which can then adapt and assume any form necessary. It is for this purpose we have begun making extensive research into twins. Into twins? Annie Clarabella and Kevin Diesel had met as rail enthusiasts, fallen Why did it look like trains? gotten married within weeks of meeting. The next step in their eyes was to become biofused. It was the most romantic thing in their eyes. Oh, this is going to be disturbing. Engine, she a coach. And they would ride the rails together. Kevin became his namesake, a sleek black diesel engine. It was Annie's operation where things didn't go to plan. As Annie's cells were being reprogrammed, they split in the early stages of the operation, and two coaches were created. Although these twins were far from identical. People One doesn't look right. To notice just how many twins were being created on the island, but the questions were brushed off or ignored. One too many. In an effort to deflect criticism, Annie and Clarabelle, the first two biofused coaches, were put into service straight away. Everyone was very excited. That's no nasty, bro. That's like their organs. Where all the organic parts were in a coach. All about those luxurious, expensive pink leather. Let me just take seat, a seat here, you know? It's just your liver. I don't even want to tell you what they found in the toilets. Oh, that is disgusting. Following this I didn't want to see what's in the toilets. Annie and Clarabelle would be kept out of the public gaze. One would stay with her husband, the other sent away to hit logistics. Diesel was forced to make a heartbreaking choice. Which of these ladies to spend the rest of his life with? I don't know about Plus the one on the right. All of two seconds. She looked right. The other don't look right. 
for Annie, a lifetime with her husband, hidden away from the public gaze. For Clarabelle, the safety and care of hit logistics. They're gonna terminate her, aren't they? Hit logistics. I mean, why she gotta look ugly, bro? That's her fault. It was the abilities they had because of it. The telepathic links between twin engines was found to be incredibly powerful. The psychic links found in natural twins is profoundly more powerful in biofused vehicles. Of course, essentially, these are the same person. Hit Logistics would use what they had learned to work on duplication. A volunteer soldier could be biofused exponentially, creating copies of those cells. Think of it. it makes more a sense on soldiers. Human participant. Not just controlling a weapon, but becoming the weapon. Becoming the Able weapon. Able to react to danger and orders in a fraction of the time. To maintain the secrecy of these illegal experiments, okay, now that's cool. the soldiers' faces would be covered up, so that the only giveaway was a cry of discomfort when a vehicle was damaged or a tank shell was fired. Ah! Oh! Come on now. <laughs> oh man. Everything was good till then. Professor Ruth wanted to take these experiments further. To duplicate his deprogrammed cells to assimilate any biofused matter it made contact with. To assume any form of any size. Think of the possibilities. A weapon dropped into a city. That can take any form it wishes and adapt any organic material it finds. Whole communities of people removed and left empty for occupation. You can take over the whole island. Stage one is the secure storage of biofuels that is crazy. in stasis. Stage two will involve the release of this material in secure conditions, of course. To release this material in an uncontrolled state would be disastrous. There was nothing they wouldn't try in that place, even experimenting with mirrors. As well as mirror testing, work on twins would become more extreme to test just how far the telekinetic link in biofused matter would go. He actually cracked it. For one set of twins, the link would go too far. Whilst unseen horrors were administered on Don, the doctors and specialists at Hit Logistics could observe in full detail the torture as an unbreakable bond with his twin would tear Douglas apart. He's gonna rupture, isn't he? Logistics would also be seen as a welcome refuge from another threat on Sodor. Steamies, we called them. They started out as rail enthusiasts, Sodor steam. train spotters. They loved engines, but where was the arm in that? But when living engines were introduced on Sodor, they couldn't get here fast enough. Most were seen as enthusiastic volunteers on the railway. Some getting permanent jobs. Now the Steamy's obsession with engines had a new, darker place to vent their frustrations. James was a favourite engine. Sometimes every night for weeks they'd gather at the turntable and play a spin the engine. <laughs> that is messed up. Leave the poor train alone. This security footage, hidden by Sodor research until now, shows Gordon desperately pretending he couldn't fit on the turntable. But James was always the favourite. 
even to the television Thomas writers. and the breakdown James train. James driver and fireman were feeling him all over. But I had nothing to do with any of that business. Not after the first time. With the closure of the railway, so not after the, the first engines time. were hidden away, and the steamies would go underground and bide their time. And it would be thirty years and a new documentary before anyone cared. Before anyone I still asked, shed 17. Why did this happen? Where were the engines? And what can we do about any of it? The protests aimed at the engines are people too. logistics. The destruction of the evidence was speeded up. Yo, this is messed up. Unnecessary engines will be incinerated quickly and brutally. It's easy as signing a form, ticking a box, or waving a flag. The engines we knew and loved were murdered in the most efficient way possible. Man's but got it cremated. Would be the most insignificant death of all that would have the most devastating effect. Not any transport at hit logistics, but the one nobody witnessed, except for one. They'd spent 30 years together, just looking into each other's eyes, forgotten 30 by years? All, just as happy there as still? As could ever hope to be. It's a lot of time. As Clarabelle was disposed of, no one but Diesel knew what happened to her twin nearly 20 miles away. Uh oh. Anyway, what's wrong? What's the oh, matter? since they're burning one, the other one suffers. Because they're twins. Please. Look like a burnt chicken stay, nugget. Stay with me. Stay with me. No. 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 Dude, it blew up. wasn't over for Diesel. He had to get out. Dude, as he saw as her burn. His wife perish was, the worst was yet to come. He has to run her over, doesn't he? This is messed up, yo. <laughs> Dude, her body, her bones, her organs are just there. Poor dude has to drive over them. After 30 years, let's see uh, what he finds on the other side. So, did he break out? This is all your fault. You'll never laugh at me again. The rights of biofused engines will be ignored no more. The secrets of Sodor will be revealed. The state-sponsored torture of engines must be stopped. Diesel would form the Sodor Liberation Front. His dream was to make Sodor Island a home for engines and other transport, free from the He's tyranny of He's an activist now. Beings. And we will not stop until the island of Sodor is recognized as a refuge for all engines. 
That is kind of creepy, bro. Of the engines will be disposed of. That's got to be him, right? Logistics will be moved off site to a quarry in the Blue Mountains of Sodor. 6,000 pounds of desiccated biofused matter. Its location, the real mystery. And tending to this top secret site was the only engine in the UK still being illegally operated. Oh, we can get him to do pretty much anything we want to. Uh, you know, a bit of, uh, bit of, bit of the black stuff. Yeah, yeah, bit of the black stuff. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Why does this sound like a sheep? <laughs> how Ferdinand was being forced to work, controlled by his addiction to Welsh yeah, coal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're going to yeah. work for it, are you? Yeah. 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 Do you want yeah. some of this? We use Welsh coal to get the weaker engines started up, to give some engines a kick when they were struggling to get up in the morning. We so Welsh coal was like a drug for them. Are you, are, you, are you the coal man? No? Yeah. no? What are you looking at me for? Oh, let's all look at a funny engine! Is that right? Let's all look at a funny engine! Did he just yeah, snap? Welsh coal acted as a narcotic on the engines. Prolonged use would lead to addiction and dependency. Oh. You gotta be kidding me. Dude, he's bleeding from his nose. As Welsh coal addiction became a bigger and bigger problem, dependency increased on the set of the television series. No, you'll never win first prize, Percy moaned. Don't worry, Percy. Thomas puffed. All I need is a good washdown. One morning, Gordon was in the yard taking on a large supply of coal. That's the third load of coal you've had today, Gordon. Some might say you're being rather greedy. Increasingly, engines would cause what appeared to be accidents. But in fact, were Dude, what are you exposed doing? to Welsh coal. But prolonged use would result in permanent brain damage. Dealers on the set, violence among the actors. We knew there was a problem face. when Gordon started talking to the <laughs> he voice. He off that coal, head, man. Telling him to do things, bad things. Yes, said Gordon. I will. Dude, he burned the place down. Hit logistics would later take Welsh coal. Dude, he was going so fast. Conclusion: High-speed steam engines would be pushed to their limits on high doses of the coal. Dude, he was legit breathing fire. As pressure from the media increased, and fearing more bad press, Project G1 was put on hold. Its future uncertain. Stage one stored away. In what Professor Ruth called a controlled I really want to see what's behind there. He dug his own grave, appearing in that documentary, as well as working at Hit Logistics. But he didn't see anything wrong in that. And so, just like everyone Burn in else, hell, hope your he family die? For everything. Even Smudger. Smudger's story had been a children's favourite around the world. Smudger worked on the mid Sodor Railway. The mine the engines worked on didn't make much, but it was enough to keep them going. Smudger was moved there because of his faults. His wheel alignment was off, meaning he'd come off the rails too often. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cash-strapped mine company couldn't afford the repairs. Their solution would be bad. Uh-oh. What did they do to him? Yo, what the heck? They dismembered him, taking away his wheels and opening him up. The butchers turned him into a steam generator. Shut off from all sensation, smudge a power. These the people are so years. messed up. Alone with his thoughts, he would slowly lose his mind. When business dried up, do you think they come back for Smudger? Did they Poor help? Smudger. They were left there for years. Everyone had forgotten him. In a way, it would have been better for Smudger if he'd been forgotten forever. Sadly, for Smudger, salvation would arrive, but in the form of hit logistics. Professor Roof was still eager to find as much biofused material as he could, but Smudger had changed over time. 
Smudger had remained in the same place for nearly 30 years. His organic parts were no oh. longer just part of a steam engine. They had become the whole building. Shed. Smudger and the shed were one and the same. They couldn't be hey, removed. This would be the final act of hit logistics. Closing hey, they got that Tom of the Train shirt. Soon, there would be nothing left. I need me one of those. Their existence. That was what they hoped. They didn't count on one final desperate act. Uh oh. Exposed. Driven mad by all the things he'd seen working for the government. But the worst thing was having to keep it quiet for all those years. Unfortunately, Cranky's genetic structure Cranky gave up around fully, not without breaking the entire circulatory system to his head. Effectively, he was condemning himself to a painful death. So he killed himself. Died for a great cause. I believe Cranky knew the consequences, Cranky. and he knew it had to be done. But his wouldn't be the only sacrifice that day. Diesel. I don't believe he was evil, or that he wanted to kill anyone. He just wanted to show the world what the government was trying to cover up. He didn't know what was in there, all the damage he'd do. Oh no, he released that, Project G1. ...into the now secured stasis container of Project G Stage 1. Opening it up and allowing the deprogrammed biofused matter to assimilate... This is gonna get epic. Wished, ...and to take on any form it wished. Any form? You're dead, man. Lads, I looked at the mirror. I looked at the mirror, lads. Lads. Any boy or fused engines in there didn't stand a chance. Dude, that is messed up. Why is he killing it the trains? The canister. And then we all got to see it in its natural state. Oh. No, that thing is humongous. They're devouring the whole town. Dude, what the heck is that? Sunk in, government forces were deployed. This would be the only line of defense. Yeah, good luck taking that thing down. But Project G1 was more than capable of defending itself and would take whatever action was necessary. Oh, take that. Gordon's alive! It could now not be stopped. 
As it forged ahead, it became clear where its goal was. More biofused cells, more life, more engines. More! It had to assimilate cells to grow, to live. Just want to, to get bigger and stronger. Blue Mountain Quarry. The site of thousands of tons of dead, desiccated biofused matter, hidden from the outside world. A rich source of matter which would make Project G1 indestructible. Ugh, it has another face in there. It were drawn here to be with its own kind. The last vestiges of Sodor's engines. It was trying to find peace. Realizing Project G1's destination and intent, the military provided it with what it was looking for. engine whose fate everyone had asked about for years. No way. Ew, his face. Twenty-eight operations to try and reconstruct him as a human being. He had remained behind closed doors, unwilling until now to show the world the monster he had become. Oh my that God, he's hideous! I knew. That wasn't an engine or a human. It what a did creature, they do to my boy Thomas, yo? By surgeons and engineers alike, unable to react to the outside world at this stage. Thomas was the last chance the military had to stop Project G1. He moved. My child. Yes, it is I, Papa. Thomas. Oh, he knows that's Thomas, bro. So emotional. I'm not crying, you're crying, huh? Dude, he actually, like... Looked him right in the eyes, even though he doesn't have any eyes. Kind of creepy. Finally, the nightmare were over. Thomas had found the remains of his friends. His friends had found him. So dark, and they took over the world. Sons would finally be at no! <laughs> It was a trap. <laughs> of course. Should have seen that coming. Wait, what is what is that? The mystery of the Blue Mountain had been solved. Six thousand tons of desiccated, dehumanized biofused matter. Oh, that is in full view. That's just disgusting, bro. It's one giant. And now used as a weapon. No way it just squeezes them, right? Are you kidding me? Kill them just like that? Dude, you're a spider monkey. You could have jumped out of the way.
They heard him talk. After so long. And he's moving. I feel for you, Thomas. No, destroy them. Okay, maybe not. That would have been cool, right? He destroyed them. He had like some powers. All the memories. How beautiful. I'm watching a Disney movie. This was the military's plan all along. There was never any intention to allow them some kind of peace. And with that, Thomas lost his only link to the past. Now all that's left is his reanimated pneumatic body. A confused mind that lost everything. With his past the only thing left to torment him. Thomas decided to leave. He'd seen everything. The last people he trusted had abandoned him. But I was still here to tell his story. After all the betrayal, disloyalty and torment, I could still say I were his only friend. The only person who hadn't abandoned him. I could hold my head up high and say, I was... <laughs> I knew it. I knew Thomas had some rage in him. I told y'all Thomas was going to go crazy, bro. I knew it. In 2021, Soda Island was officially recognized as a biofuse only compound. By almost 98% of the engines of Soda Island voted to leave the UK. Yeah, after all of that happening, why would they want to reside there? <laughs> By 2040, all diplomatic uh, ties between Soda Island and the United Kingdom were cut off. Since then, no human has set foot on Soda Island and no biofuse engine has uh, had contact with the outside world. Wow. Don't tell me they bring Thomas to a body. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Okay, Sawdust? Clear. That will not be necessary. Who, who are you? Who is this man? What's he doing here? The professor. This man is in who, who, our who, care. Who, 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 no right to be here. Relax, Mr. Hartley. You are in our capable hands now. No! Oh, what is this? Some DNA? Of course. Oh, I see your gears. Oh, this can't be good. Great, another experiment. I knew it. Well, Mr. Artley. Not is that fat controller? Be quite the fawn in our side. The wrench in our works. The leaves on our rails. 
never want to shy away. Okay, that's creepy, bro. Stop moving. Were you, Mr. Arley? Always another revelation about your faithful employer. Never a care for the trouble you caused. The innovations you've entered. Initiatives you stalled. The jobs you've lost. The challenges to this island's human supremacy. Well, we've got a very special place for you here. Somewhere you can't open your big mouth or interfere anymore. And don't worry, Mr. Hartley. You're among friends here. This is where everyone ends up once they've become troublesome. He got turned into a mining car. No. Yep, you're trapped there forever, my guy. You ain't never gonna see the daylight. Dude, it's a whole hangar of carts. Wow, that was crazy, bro. That was like legit a whole hour. I can't believe uh, Paul actually managed to pull this off. <laughs> Dude, it was intense. I'm not gonna lie, it is way better than Project uh, Shed 17. Although they do have to correlate with each other, but this second part was just something else, man. It's like the top of the cake, you know, the cherry on top of the ice cream or whatever, the sundae. All right, you guys. Well, that was Project G1. If you guys have any other recommendations, let me know down in the comments below. If you made it to the end of the video, drop a year in the comments. And thank you all for watching. Thank you for the support. And I will see you all in the next one.